Hey, it's Will here for HairGuard. So let's get straight to the point. Is adenosine worth it? Is it gonna grow back any of your hair? Should you be using it? And are there any side effects to worry about? We have three recent studies along with user feedback and before and after results to look at in this video. So by the end of this video, you'll know if adenosine is right for your hair loss. So adenosine, is it overhyped or worth adding to your hair loss stack? And if so, what's the best way to go about it? So firstly, a little background. Adenosine is a naturally occurring substance found in the human cells. You might be familiar with the four nuclear bases that make our DNA code. Cytosine, guanine, thymine, and adenine. Well, adenosine is basically adenine with an extra sugar molecule. But unlike adenine, it's not involved with DNA. Instead, it acts as an important signaling compound because receptors for adenosine are widespread throughout the body. It has many physiological functions like regulating inflammation and allergic reactions. Chemically, adenine is very similar to caffeine, which is why every time you drink coffee, you're inadvertently blocking your adenosine receptors. And it's for this reason that coffee stimulates our nervous system. Now, when it comes to hair loss, nobody knows really for sure how adenosine actually works. But there are suggestions that it's linked to minoxidil's mechanism of action. You see, one of the ways minoxidil is thought to promote hair growth is via stimulation of the vascular endothelial growth factor, or VGEF, in the dermal papilla cells. And it does this through activation of adenosine receptors. So with a topical adenosine, the idea is to upregulate VGF and other growth factors directly at the hair follicle. All this is well and good, but how well does adenosine actually work against hair loss in the real world? What does the real world data with balding people actually tell us? So to date, we have three published studies, all of them relatively recent. The first study out of Japan had 38 participants and compared an adenosine lotion to placebo over the course of six months. Compared to the placebo, the men in the adenosine group had improved hair density, more mature hairs, and fewer velous hairs. You can see in these before and after photos a participant who had a very good response to the treatment. So a second study out of Japan again recruited 104 men and split them into two groups. Half received twice daily adenosine lotion at 0.75% strength and the other half a placebo. The treatment lasted six months. Not only was this study much larger than the previous one, it also had a variety of efficacy measures. The dermatologists who reviewed the before and after photos and hair counts evaluated each man on a six point scale. This ranged from very clear improvement as the best possible outcome to clear improvement and then fairly clear improvement, slight improvement, no change, and then all the way down to progression of baldness at the worst. So the hair loss actually got worse. You can see in these before and after photos, an example of the very best possible response, very clear improvement at the top row. In the middle row and the bottom row, you can see before and afters of the two other patients who are rated with the second best and third best type of response respectively. Pause this video if you like to study these photos a bit more. After six months, 80% of the adenosine treated men were rated as at least fairly clearly improved or better. This compared to 32% for the placebo group. Adenosine also resulted in fewer velous hairs and more terminal hairs compared to the placebo. Finally, the men themselves were also asked to report how happy they were with the treatment and they generally gave more positive responses in the adenosine group. The third and final study was out of Iran and compared twice daily adenosine at 0.75% to 5% minoxidil. 110 men were evenly split between the two groups and the treatment lasted six months. And amazingly, there were no reported differences between the two treatments, implying that they both worked the same. The problem here was that the researchers used only three very broad classifications, complete recovery, relative recovery, and no recovery. This made it very difficult to capture any differences between the two treatments. 
The one metric where there was a difference was the patient's self-reported satisfaction. Nearly 70% reported being satisfied in the adenosine group compared to 28% with minoxidil. What about the side effects? All studies agree that when used topically, adenosine is a very, very safe substance. Side effects are rare, and if you do get some, they're more likely to be due from another ingredient in the formulation rather than the adenosine itself. So what's our overall take? Though we only have a limited number of published studies, they all agree that adenosine has some anti-hair loss properties. The studies out of Japan in particular are well-designed and well-documented. Those studies also show us some before and after photos of the participants, which is something that really adds credibility to the research papers. Adenosine has also won the test of the market. Aside from hair loss, it's been increasingly used as an anti-aging ingredient in a variety of cosmetic products most commonly for the face. According to a 2019 report, it's an ingredient in over 700 cosmetic products. Having said that though, on its own, adenosine is probably not so powerful in reversing hair loss. So it will be far better to combine it with other topical ingredients rather than using it as a standalone product. That's why we added adenosine as part of our proprietary Maxoxidil formulation. Adenosine along with caffeine, zinc, DHT blockers, and anagen phase stimulators combine to create the most powerful topical ever. So if you're worried about hair loss and you wanna add adenosine to your hair care stack, then the professionally formulated Maxoxidil is the way to go. What we see time and again is that stacking mechanisms produces the best results. That's why if you do decide to use a topical, use one that improves the microvascular circulation, stimulates the antigen growth phase, blocks DHT and more all in one bottle. You can get the multiple hair growth mechanisms all in one bottle. Check the link in the description to learn more. And that's it for this video. Also, let me know in the comments what topic you want me to cover next and just share your thoughts in general about the video. I try to reply to each comment individually. Like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.